Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the Rug Gear RG100 Mariner cell phone. You'll receive the phone, a battery, micro USB charging cable, a set of headphones, an international travel charger, mini screwdriver for opening the battery door, and an instruction manual. The phone looks a lot like a classic track phone, though a bit bulkier and more heavy duty. The plastic seems decently durable, on par with an outdoor walkie-talkie. The first thing you'll need to do is use the small screwdriver piece to open the back cover. Inside, you can load up to two SIM cards and a micro SD memory card. Note that the SIM 1 slot accepts full-sized SIM cards only, while the SIM 2 slot accepts mini SIM cards. Micro SIM cards cannot be used without an adapter. Install the battery and replace the door. Then open the rubber door on the bottom to plug the micro USB charging cable in and charge the phone up. To turn on the phone, press and hold the red end call button. The phone has a 2-inch diagonal screen that lacks a lot of depth and color, though it's mostly for reading text and menus, so it's not a big deal. In the menu, you navigate using the center click wheel and OK button. You have typical settings like call history, phone book, text, multimedia player, charge pal which activates the external charging for use as a power bank, Bluetooth which lets you pair a different phone to this one to use its service for calling, text, or as an external speaker, though you may need to install the BT Notifier app to access all these features. Then there's also a game in this phone called F1 Race, which is basically like a vertically scrolling frogger. There's tools for browsing files, a calculator, calendar, and alarm clock. In the security settings, you can set a password to lock the phone. The default password is 1122. The sound from the speakers is loud and has decent quality for a 3 watt speaker, though it's not amazing. I do have to say though that I was impressed with the FM radio. It picked up a bunch of stations and the sound was clear. Couple of days. Well, Tynes has got three gold medals. You know, I mean, he, he certainly didn't have to go to the Olympics this year. Right? During calls, the sound quality from the earpiece wasn't that great, but the mic picked up my voice and it sounded fine on the other end. The flashlight at the tip is activated using the button on the top left-hand side. There's a low, high, SOS, and strobe setting. At the top is a rubber sealed port for the headphones. On the right shoulder is a door that covers the full sized USB output port for charging other devices. Below that are the volume keys. On the back is the camera. It takes low resolution 1.3 megapixel photos and video. Down here on the right hand corner are two contacts for seating the phone in a charging station, just like a walkie talkie. The phone is mildly rugged. It's able to withstand drops of up to 5 feet, and being mostly plastic, doesn't have a glass screen to shatter. With all the ports sealed by their respective rubber doors and the battery cover tightened all the way, the phone is also waterproof, rated at IP67 and able to survive being submerged at up to 3 feet for up to 30 minutes. All in all, with the US, EU, and UK plugs for the charger, this phone makes for a great secondary phone for travel if you don't want to whip out your expensive iPhone in a crowded place. You'll still be able to access your calls and text via Bluetooth, or you can just use an international SIM card in the phone. While it doesn't have more useful features like maps or GPS, it is a good basic phone for emergencies, and it has a long battery life of 600 hours on a single charge. As long as you temper your expectations and understand that this isn't a smartphone, it should work fine. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.